Good evening, one and all. Welcome all to a new session of Vayuman Sanjeevani's webinar series. Today's session topic is World Respiratory System and Respiratory Diseases in Elderly. To talk about this, we have Dr. Srikant, sir. Welcome you, sir, for today's session. And our moderator for the day is Smita. I welcome Smita also. With that, for all the Zoom and YouTube participants for the day, once again, I welcome to today's session. Introducing Smita, she is an active volunteer of Vayoman Sanjeevani, also a volunteer of well-being in uh, well-being volunteer in Nimans. She is doing her uh, MA in psychology. So that's about uh, Smita. Now I request Smita to address our speaker. On to you, Smita. Thank you. Thank you, Jaina, ma'am. Uh, good evening, everyone. I welcome all the Zoom and YouTube participants to 85th webinar series of Vayomanasa Sanjeevini. The head of this initiative is Dr. P.T. Shivakumar and other team members of Geriatric Clinic and Services, Department of Psychiatric Enhance. Currently, the activities are Monday's public awareness webinar, team-based group meetings conducted by volunteers, and Saturday's activity sessions which focuses mainly on mental health and well-being in older adults. And on the occasion of World Asthma Day, the topic of today is respiratory problem in elderly. To discuss more about this, I welcome Dr. Srikant Hiramat, born and brought up in uh, Nurvi village, Kubli Taluk, completed uh, up to 10th standard in rural area, sir joined MBBS in VIMS Bellari, Later completed MD from Government Medical College, Baroda of Gujarat. Secured first rank in MS University exams, Baroda. Later, sir joined KMC Manipal at Udupi and at present is working as consultant pulmonologist in SDM College of Medical Science, Darwad since six years. So this is a very short brief about you. Sir, on behalf of uh, Vayo Manasa Sanjeevini team and all participants, I welcome you to this webinar. Welcome, sir. Thank and you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Shall I start the session? Yes, yeah, sir. You can start the... Please go ahead, sir. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So, thank you very much for the kind introduction. And uh, before starting my topic, I would like to... Well, thank you very much to the Vayomanasa Sanjeevani team in collaboration with the Indian Society of uh, Psych uh, Psychiatry and Nimans uh, for conducting these awareness programs every Monday. Uh, today's topic is respiratory diseases in elderly people. So no elderly person should be like an exile in our families. The elderly should be a treasure of our society. So um, aging is not the disease. So aging is just a risk factor to develop the disease. Okay. Still, we have a scope to reduce those risk factors in elderly people. So we define elderly when they cross 65 years of age groups. So before going in detail about this topic, so we'll see what is aging. So aging is a complex biological process that is characterized by irreversible functional and anatomical changes in the body, resulting in an increased susceptibility to disease processes. It means, so functional changes. So it means as age progresses, we have a different systems in our body like digestive system, cardiac system, and CNS system that is brain, and respiratory system. So there will be either decrease in the functioning or there is an alteration in the functioning of these systems, which is going to cause some of the diseases. And at the same time, some anatomical changes in our body, like development cataract in eyes is going to cause diminution of the vision. And also there is a bending of the spine is going to cause bending of our posture which will in turn leads to decreased expansion of the lungs and can attract so many infections. So aging is associated with the multiple structural changes even in respiratory system, which results in the susceptibility to many disease processes. 
So let us see what are changes are going to happen in lungs as age progresses. So we all know that lungs work like a balloon. So it has got an elasticity where, where it can expand and it can recoil by taking breath in and out respectively. So lung elasticity recoiling is usually reduced as age progresses. That is called as age-related emphysema, where lungs are remained in an expanded status as the uh, age progresses. And because of that reason, there will be a small airway caliber, means the diameter of the small airways are usually reduced, which is going to cause decreased flow when we blow. So because of that reason, some amount of the air always remains in our lungs. So which is more than what actually it remains in younger age groups. So because of that reason, patient has to put, or an individual has to put more pressure to exhale. So that pressure is going to affect again the airways where it again causes increased dynamic airway collapse. Means again, there is a collapse of the airways because of the pressure over those airways. And at the same time, because of the calcification of the uh, costochondral junction, means where the ribs are joined to other bones, and they, because of the decreased respiratory muscle strength, there will be a decreased chest wall compliance. So that is in turn going to cause decreased expansion of the lungs. And anything which affects the lungs are going to reduce the gas exchange because the function, main function of our lung is to make the oxygen to reach our blood vessels when we take the breath. So that process is called as gas exchange. In turn, that oxygen is going to reach the different parts of the body. So when this gas exchange is altered, then automatically the oxygen supplied to the blood vessels in turn to the different parts of the body is reduced and that is going to cause breathlessness. So similarly, in the elderly people are more prone to develop the infections especially. So there are some three main reasons for these things. One is weak cough reflex. So whenever some foreign body enters in our respiratory system, immediately we'll get a cough reflex, which is helpful to get it out of our respiratory tract. But when there is a weaker cough reflex because of the decreased reflexes in the respiratory system in elderly people, the whatever foreign body which reaches the lungs usually remains there only and sometimes that becomes the source of infection. And some hair-like projections in the airways which are usually less mobile and the length of those hair-like projections which are there especially in younger age group which are very uh, larger and usually they move very faster. So that becomes usually slower and smaller in size and that is going to cause stagnation of the secretions in the airways. I'll show the picture. You can see in younger age groups, in younger age groups, you can see on the left hand side, there is a hair like projections which are usually lengthier in uh, their heights. And whereas in case of older age groups, usually they are shortened. So because of that reason, the mucus secret secreted in the airways remains within the airway and it will not be usually drained up and out of the airways and because of that reason again that becomes good media for the growth of bacteria and viruses which can cause different types of infections and at the same time as age progresses nose and breathing passages which usually secrete IgA antibodies I think Everyone must be aware of what are antibodies after the COVID era because the vaccination usually produces antibodies, which is called as acquired antibodies. Whereas our body has got certain mechanisms where it can produce natural antibodies. They are called as IgA antibodies, especially where there is a passage and where there is a direct connection to the environment like airways. So these IgA antibodies are they are the military-like structures in our airways, which can hinder, which can stop so many viruses and bacteria at the exposure site only so that it can 
prevent the further development of the disease or infections in the lungs. But as age progresses, the production of these IgA antibodies are usually reduced, and that is one of the responsible factor for the development of repeated infections in elderly people. So other than this aging or structural or functional changes in the lungs, some other common risk factors which are responsible to develop the lung disorders like cardiac conditions. Some of the heart conditions are indirectly related to lung functions and that is going to worsen the or alter the functions of the lungs, kidney and liver conditions. So they are going to cause some of the alterations in the functions of the lung and that is also responsible for the development of some lung disorders. Some of the chronic diseases like diabetes and rheumatological finding, uh, diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, systemic lupus erythematosus, they are some autoimmune disorders which in turn affect the lung functions and can cause many diseases in the lungs. And we all know that our building blocks of our body is a protein. So when the patient or individual won't take a proper food or because of the age factor, there will be a decline in the functions of the gastrointestinal tract where there is some digestive problems. So there is absorption defects of these proteins and calories. So that is going to cause protein calorie malnutrition in turn leads to hypoalbuminemia, means there is a decrease in the albumin level in the body, which is responsible for the development of diseases. <clears throat> the most important behavioral and environmental factor for the development of the lung disease is a tobacco smoking. So alcoholism in turn reduces the immune power of our lungs, and that is going to cause many infections. And repeated respiratory tract viral infections are what responsible to develop many damages in the lungs. What we have observed in the COVID era, sometimes it can cause some permanent damages in the lungs, which will lead to interstitial lung disease or some, some of the other disorders in the lung, which will cause a long-term morbidity. The burden of this coexisting medical condition is frequently much higher in these older patients. That's why many of these comorbidities can mimic like a pulmonary disorders or lung disorders. So for example, heart attacks. So some of the atypical, uh, because usually the many diseases present in an atypical way in elderly people, we can expect heart attack even without the chest pain. So sometimes patient can come to us with the only breathlessness. So when everything is evaluated in terms of lungs, everything looks fine, but the patient might be having that time the lung uh, cardiac issues. So because of this decreased pumping capacity of the uh, heart, and there will be some amount of fluid accumulation in the lungs that is called as pulmonary edema, so which is responsible for the development of breathlessness. And some of the kidney issues can also cause the fluid retention in the body because the, whatever uh, un, uh, unwanted things that are remained in the body are not usually excreted through these dysfunctioned kidneys. So because of that reason, so more amount of fluid gets accumulated within the lungs and that can also sometimes cause pulmonary edema. And at the same time, these kidney diseases are usually associated with a decreased hemoglobin production. That decreased hemoglobin production is in turn cause anemia, which is responsible for the development of breathlessness sometimes in elderly people. So the evidence suggests that these pulmonary diseases are often misdiagnosed as a different diseases and they are inappropriately treated in elderly patients. So let us see what are the common diseases we usually come across in elderly people. One is pneumonia. So pneumonia is very common uh, after the age group of 65 years. The pneumonia means it is an infection of the lungs where there is a secretion of the mucus and other inflammatory mediators within the lungs, so which blocks the airways and that is going to reduce the gas exchange. As I already explained, because of that reduced gas exchange, patient will have a breathlessness because oxygen will be dropped within the body and usually people will sense that as a breathlessness. 
as this disease progresses or it becomes very severe it can affect different parts of the body like sometimes it can cause septic shock we call so where there is uh, uh, infection sometimes it reaches the blood stream and the reaching of this blood stream can dysfunction the different vital organs like brain heart and kidneys and can cause multi organ dysfunctions and next is copd which is usually caused by exposure exposure to the noxious stimuli like uh, tobacco smoking and sometimes it is exposure to some smoke in some factories like that is occupation related for a long period of time and sometimes it can be because of the exposure to biofuel mass uh, combustion that can also release some smoke and that is also responsible to develop copd and sometimes exposure to air pollution for a long period of time either it is outdoor or indoor is a responsible uh cause to develop the copd copd means there will be a expansion of the airways you can see this some hole like structures in the lungs so this uh, the below is the normal lung that hole like structure is going to reduce the oxygenation in that area and the oxygen reaching the blood is usually reduced and, and can cause breathing difficulties next is asthma asthma is an allergic condition you can see the airways here on the left hand side the normal airway where it is very patent and you can breathe easily through this one whereas on the right hand side you can see there is a constricted bronchus means airways are usually blocked by the increased secretions and the diameter is reduced because of that reason people will have a breathlessness and whistling type of sound while they are breathing it is called as wheezing and sometimes it can they can present like a chest tightness and sudden onset of uh, uh, that is called as status asthmatic sudden respiratory failures are also common in case of asthmatics lung cancer is usually seen in elderly people more than 60 years of age and it is mainly because of the tobacco smoking or exposure to some of the carcinogenic agents for a long period of time especially in some occupations or some family history is also a uh, important risk factor to develop lung cancer pulmonary embolism is an entity where we usually well aware of the term heart attack so there is a entity called as lung attack like in heart attack usually there is a blockage of the vasculatures within the heart so the pumping capacity or the uh, functioning of the cardia or heart is usually reduced likewise in lungs also there are blood vessels those blood vessels are sometimes blocked by some thrombus so that thrombosis is going to cause damages in the distal part of that blockage and that is going to cause breathlessness because so when there is a blockage in the vasculatures that is going to affect the purification of the uh, blood by oxygenation so when there is a blockage the impure blood means deoxygenated blood is not converted into oxygenated blood or it is a pure blood so that is going to affect the oxygenation of the different tissues of the body and that is going to cause breathlessness the other entity what we usually see after 60 years of age is a interstitial lung disease so interstitial lung disease is a condition where you can see them hole like structures within the lung so it looks like exactly a honey combing where the lungs are shrunken the volume of the lungs are usually reduced it is exactly same as that of our dry grapes so when we compare them with the fresh grapes so lungs become shrunken and that is going to cause decreased volume of the lung and decreased oxygenation in turn patient may develop breathlessness so when you see these all these symptoms we usually uh patient usually come with a very common symptoms of breathlessness so which accounts for around 30% uh usually a uh, patient feel that i am aged that's why i am not uh, uh, like that's why i am feeling breathless so that is not the usually is because of his pace he has to walk without breathlessness so when uh, he is feeling breathless when his friends or age group of people are not feeling breathless when they are walking together then that should be the uh, uh, point of concern we have to consider that uh, seriously and find out the cause for that and uh, the same time uh, next uh, symptoms will be cough with expectoration 
which is a very common uh, problem what we usually observe in the patients with uh, 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 patients with uh, different type of lung disorders these cuff with expectorations may look very simple because these symptoms are very common even in uh, uh, some of the respirate common respiratory conditions like uh, um, uh, common respiratory conditions like common cold and cough but these things are very common symptoms even in a very deadlier diseases like uh, uh, lung cancers and these pulmonary embolisms that's why we should not neglect these symptoms as a very common symptoms okay. so next symptoms will be wheezing so wheezing are usually common in a patients with asthma and copd where usually those patients because of the decreased airway diameter usually whenever air comes out of those decreased diameter it causes some whistling type of sound and that is also a uh, concern of point we have to consider that as a serious issue and uh, get evaluated by the doctor next is easy fatigability so there is a slight difference between the breathlessness and easy fatigability easy fatigability or decreased exercise tolerance previously they used to do certain exercises but now they are not able to do that so such things are usually common in a patients where there is a decreased hemoglobin where there is a muscle weakness and those patients who are having diabetes hypertension uh, because of that reason there will be some nerve weaknesses that can also sometimes cause these type of easy fatigabilities so these are the symptoms which are usually seen in a patients uh, with the different type of uh, this uh, pulmonary disorders but uh, with all these things so it is always better to uh, consult a, a specialist especially pulmonologist when these type of symptoms are usually present and they are like uh, patients usually what we have observed after covid when they develop cough and cold usually they think that everyone every patients are uh, being diagnosed as a covid and they usually directly go to pharmacy and take some medications since it is a self medication from their side so that becomes a difficult for uh, uh, treatment of the cases as it gets complicated and at the same time so consulting a specialist for the detailed evaluation is very much important factor what we have to observe uh, and sometimes when you go to doctors they may uh, tell you some simple test which will help us to differentiate between the different types of diseases as i already mentioned some cardiac conditions or kidney conditions can look like a pulmonary disorders means respiratory disorders where we have to differentiate whether it is related to heart or whether it is related to lungs so for that reason some investigations definitely help to help us so that's why we have to uh, go for some chest x rays which will help us to differentiate different diseases and at the same time there will be a pulmonary function test these pulmonary function tests are usually helpful helpful for us to diagnose this copd and uh, asthma type of disorders where it uh, helps us to detect the capacity of the lung according to their age and sometimes so it is ct scan of the chest is very much important uh, investigation tool to differentiate whether patient is having asthma or it is a interstitial lung disease and sometimes this ct chest helps us to see is there any growth or any tumor like structure in the lung so that we, that is usually ruled out by this ct chest and another important entity is a sputum examination the sputum examination definitely helps us to uh, diagnose some of the infectious diseases like tuberculosis and uh, even covid also we can make out by these uh, throat swabs or nasopharyngeal swabs and sometimes bronchoscopy it is same as that of the endoscopy these bronchoscopies are usually used to take the biopsies from the lung like airways whenever there is a tumor like structure which is growing within the lungs that that can be usually uh, done by this type of uh, investigations so after the particular diagnosis like after diagnosing the particular etiology then the treatment is always directed towards that etiology so we should not just treat the breathlessness we should not just treat the cough with expectation 
we should always treat the cause for the breathlessness we should always treat the cause for the cough with expectation so then the progression of the disease can be hindered and the further complications that occurs related to that can also be stopped by diagnosing the disease and the directing the treatment towards that particular diagnosis and at the same time it is always mandatory to address the patient's comorbid conditions we can't just give the same doses or same medication whatever we are giving in a younger age groups because the elderly people will have so many other comorbid conditions so each and every comorbid conditions should be addressed before diagnosing or before treating this particular respiratory disease and sometimes the dose modification is very much important so whatever medications we are giving in a younger people we can't give the same doses to the elderly people because always the dose changes and it is not just the pediatric age group uh, people whatever they are taking the medication same doses also we can't give here because there are so many issues like if there is a decreased functioning of the kidney some of the doses may become half or quarter of the whatever dose that is required for the younger populations so along with this so it is always better to address even some preventive and rehabilitation measures for the patients with the respiratory disorders so many respiratory disorders are not curable they are just controllable and the progression of the disease can be reduced and they can be controlled in a 100% way and to increase the quality of the life sometimes it is mandatory to consider the rehabilitation programs so they are called as pulmonary rehabilitation programs to strengthen the respiratory muscles and which will in turn help us to increase the exercise tolerance of the elderly people and at the same time some vaccines usually in pediatric age groups or children we usually give so many medication vaccinations to reduce some deadlier diseases here also like some pneumonias like uh, pneumococcal pneumonia influenza pneumonia and covid pneumonias we can use these vaccinations to reduce the frequency of getting such diseases at the, as well as to reduce the severity of the disease such type of vaccinations are very much important so considering all these things so it is a responsibility of every citizen or young citizen or a middle aged people to take care of our own our elderly people health so that uh, uh, they become the uh, uh, main treasurers of our society thank you thank you very much for patient listening thank you so much sir for that uh, wonderful uh, presentation uh, now i request the smita to go ahead with the question participants whoever is having any questions please raise your hands and you can unmute and you can ask your questions and uh, share your experience thank you smita go ahead yeah uh, sir comparatively to in elderly people are the women or men age group more prone to respiratory problems sir so considering different like many evidences we have seen that males are usually more prone to develop respiratory diseases compared to females there are so many reasons for this like some of the social factors some of the behavioral factors and some of the hormonal factors and biological factors are responsible to develop some diseases in males and some diseases in females but as a overall respiratory system is concerned male are prone to develop more respiratory disorders and at the same time when you consider the severity of the disease in males and females these respiratory diseases are usually more severe in male compared to females some of the behavior like so usually what we have observed like those who are now in, at the age of more than 65 years that time the smoking tendency was usually more in males compared to females though we are seeing the change in the trend even females are also chronic smokers nowadays but previously usually the smoking habit was more prevalent in males compared to females and at the same time the exposure time to the environment like those who are working in uh, like usually we see the housewife house, household workers previously as a, a females 
but usually male are usually working for a long period of time in a environmental exposure like some mining areas or some of the uh, occupational hazardous areas so those things are usually responsible to develop the more severe problems in the uh, respiratory system compared to females and some of the sex hormones like estrogens are uh, responsible to give a better uh, protection against some of the respiratory diseases in uh, females compared to males so that's what we have observed like male are more prone to develop more severe and the prevalence of the disease is also more common in males so about the risk factors sir other uh, than aging what are like uh, smoking can affect lungs and uh, at the same time in uh, older age women's how uh, previous smoking histories yeah. will they also be equally effective yeah definitely the smoking is one of the important risk factor for the development of so many respiratory disorders many people might think that i have stopped smoking for a long period of time like long back only still i have got this type of disease and that is very common and it is also depending upon the extent of the smoking how much you have smoked and how long you have smoked depending upon that there will be a damage in the your lungs so some people will think just i am smoking one cigarette per day and that is not going to cause any problem so if one cigarette per day for 20 years whatever damage it is going to cause the similar damage is usually caused by 20 cigarettes per day for one year so it means whatever smoke that goes inside your lung is going to cause some damage and that damage is going to reflect as some of the diseases as age progresses that's why the smoking is always hazardous it is either one cigarette or it is a half cigarette it is always hazardous to the lungs it means it causes so many free radicals when it enters our lungs so that free radicals are very much dangerous for the tissues of the lungs and these tissues of the lungs has got a very poor regenerative property as like our brain so it is like once somebody has developed stroke means that weakness will be there so as days progresses it may increase but it will not come back to a normal state like that lungs also has got a very poor regenerative power that's why usually this smoking is going to cause permanent damage in your lungs and that is important risk factor for many diseases Uh, what about in uh, other cases like dust allergy will that also affect the uh, lungs so we can we tell usually some of the conditions like atopic conditions all the not all the people are like allergic to a dust the so some people they are called as hyper reactive airway diseases hyper reactive airway disease means our airways are directly connected to the environment so every day we inhale most of the dust and the so many allergens that enters our lungs it will come back so not necessarily that everyone should develop allergy against to such type of allergens but some people have got such a genetical makeup or some people will have that hyper responsiveness in that airways means so whenever we are eating so some some food particle if it enters our respiratory system usually we cough very vigorously so that it will uh come out of our respiratory system so likewise our airways usually think that whatever air or allergens it is going inside so everything it consider as a foreign body it tries to bring it out so that uh, response is called as hyper responsiveness and that hyper responsiveness is one of the uh, preliminary stage of the asthma or allergic bronchitis so it means so they become very much hyper reactive to even normal common allergens so that's why they become more symptomatic compared to those who are not having such type of hyper responsiveness okay now i uh, so tangraju sir has uh, raised their hand so you can kindly go ahead with your question tangraju sir you can unmute and uh, ask your question Uh, good evening, doctor. Good evening, good evening, sir. Yeah. Uh, smoking is a very serious uh, thing, uh, as we know. Yes. But uh, non-smoking persons are also affected by yes. the smoking. But common place like buses, cinema theaters, and other uh, areas. 
whether it is uh, it will be affect the uh, non smoking persons thank you definitely definitely that is we consider as a passive smoking so even though you are not smoking your friend may be a chronic smoker and you you uh, every day you uh, like you will have a, a contact with that person for a long period like 6 hours 8 hours so whenever he go for teas or some uh, so usually they will have a one or two cigarettes so you will be standing just beside him it is it means that if you are inhaling that smoke as good as you are also smoking one or two cigarettes along with him so that passive smoking is one of the responsible factor for the development of the disease at the same time so it is the responsibility of every citizen that if he is a active smoking he should not make somebody as a passive smoker that's why it is usually not uh, like uh, it is usually it is banned in the public places because many people become a passive smokers for that thing in fact uh, what i have already previously explained like uh, uh, males are more prone to develop the disease compared to females but we have seen many many passive smokers like uh, wives are usually having respiratory diseases before their husband develop the some copd secondary to those uh, uh, smoking history so it means sometimes that uh, whatever uh, um, damaging property is there inside the lungs because of this smoking is that uh, uh, nullifying property is usually uh, less prevalent in females compared to males that's why so when the female is a passive smoker so they are tend to develop the disease very early and in a severe form compared to males so that's why and it is not just the smoking so there are so many noxious stimuli in our environment like exposure to smoke which is coming out of the factory it is also as good some areas which are very near to some factories which is uh, which is uh, eliminating so much of smoke every day so exposure to that is also one of the risk factors and some cooks which are, who are working in uh, um, hotels so they are continuously exposed to that smoke it is as good as smoking 10 to 15 cigarettes per day and at the same times we are using some mosquito coils in our uh, uh, rooms for the mosquitoes so that smoke is also one of the responsible factor and that also acts like a smoke whatever smoke like cigarette smoking which can cause the damage the same damage it can cause if uh, we use it regularly for a long period of time so those things are usually not visible to our eyes so that's why uh, some we think that non smokers also develop the diseases compared like uh, when we see the smokers and non smokers so non smokers can have such type of exposure compared to smokers mask mask can be had uh, in public places continuously for the past two years we are we are using mask definitely uh, during walking also during walking also um, uh, car buses like that in, in road side uh, it is also smoking like that uh, the uh, only greenery place is uh, uh, advisable for walking uh, other than uh, carbon dioxide uh, definitely definitely sir yes. so that's why gardens are meant for the working places because you will have a good amount of oxygen in that area and yes. uh, we are tend to inhale more carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide which are released by the vehicles and all so that is one of the important risk factor to uh, develop the lung disorders and at the same time uh, uh long term exposure to that can cause sometimes brain dysfunctions like it can cause headache you might have experienced that at the end of the movie so when we are sitting in a movie hall so towards the end of the climax we start getting sometimes headache it is because the lot many people are sitting there exhaling the carbon dioxide so automatically in that room the oxygen level comes down now they are using ac but previously we used to get such type of sensations so usually during the uh, Uh, like uh, later part of the movies everyone used to get a headache because of the inhalation of the carbon dioxide so yeah. that is one of the uh, side effect of this uh, mask because we are inhaling our own exhaled breath and that sometimes can cause a headache that's why whenever there is no such type of exposure when you are not in contact when you are able to maintain the social distance you can meanwhile remove the mask and uh, inhale a fresh air otherwise continuously wearing mask sometimes can cause but definitely it is going to reduce the more hazardous or more uh, deadlier diseases compared to such type of effects which are usually we get off with the inhalation of our own breath 
last last uh, we are there but uh, the government could not uh, implement the smoking in public places uh, but public yes. alone uh, also should know we are uh, yeah, definitely that's what i told so it is the responsibility of every citizen that yes. uh, though they are active smokers they should not make someone as a passive smoker so that responsibility everyone has to maintain they are spoiling themselves and others <laughs> Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, I think we can move on to the next question since it was yeah. like COVID uh, mask came. Why do COVID patients experience more breathing difficulties, sir? Ma'am, there are so many problems. Actually, we have seen the, previously also we have seen many viral pneumonias, bacterial pneumonias. So the mechanism of disease which is caused by such type of common bacterial and viral pneumonias is totally different from that of uh, uh this covid viral pneumonias we are seeing some of the blockage of the vasculatures especially in the lungs so it is not the virus which is causing the damage to the lungs it is our own body's immune response against that virus is going to cause some damage in the lungs so because of that increased immune response against those viruses or to kill that viruses sometimes we have to sacrifice the part of the lung tissue so because of that reason what happens the people will have a long term sequel of the disease so usually in a normal viral or bacterial pneumonia there will be a complete healing of the lung parenchyma and usually after 7 or 8 days of therapy they usually revert back to their normal status whereas in viral pneumonia it is because of the some of the uh, long term sequelae on blockage of the vasculatures which is responsible like, which is sometimes responsible for the Uh, uh decreased purification of the oxygen so all those things made us to feel more breathless over a period of time okay uh shubhashini ma'am has raised her hand ma'am you can kindly unmute and uh, ask your question ma'am yeah uh my question to doctor is that during this covid period we've all been masking now i have uh, the two ladies who come in to help of course they are both vaccinated but as a preventive measure since i am uh, an elderly person and also an asthmatic i was all the time masked when they came of course i kept the physical distance of more than 3 to 4 feet and very rarely go near them so my question would be how long can a pass person for instance somebody who was a friend was saying when i drive i have my mask on for 8 hours if i drive from bangalore to so some whatever place so my question is how how many hours is it safe to wear the mask say for instance in my case because of these ladies and i would also sometimes take it off when i am far away from them and near my veranda but to answer the question that i asked is how safe or how long can is it safe to wear the same mask so it depends upon which type of mask you are using so some of the respirators are usually helpful for us to breathe properly and it can filter 99% of the organisms which can reach our lungs so that is also most important thing so if you are using very thin mask like surgical mask or with uh, 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 pro, uh, just a, uh, the, uh, normal mask also so sometimes what happens that may not uh, uh, uh stop you to get the infections but what happens the extent of the uh, viral particles or bacterial particles that are entering into your respiratory systems are usually uh, reduced to a larger extent and the nowhere it is mentioned that how long you can use because we have worked in a covid ward for 10 hours 15 hours with the pp kit and with the uh, n95 mask or sometimes with the respirators so though we have got some headache type of symptoms otherwise it has not caused us any uh, such type of uh, problems but definitely whenever you have got such type of uh, 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 contact with any patients with respiratory problems it is always better to wear that mask as long as possible 
So unless central, it causes some discomfort for you. So an N95 is because it, I saw a program on television which said that the N95 mask is the one that really works. Definitely, the no. other... N95 mask definitely works because it gives around 99.9 percent uh, 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 protection against the most of the viral particles as well as the. Uh, the, because we have seen even after wearing the N95 mask, also some people develop the uh, infections. But there will be some breach in using the uh, mask because we can't just use it as perfectly as it is mentioned. So sometimes there will be some breach, and that breach can sometimes cause uh, entry of the viral particles and can cause the disease. Otherwise, if you perfectly use it, as far as your knowledge is concerned. So then definitely it will give a 99% protection against the major respiratory problems. Thank you very much, doctor. Because I, the, the main reason why I'm asking this question is because I'm an asthmatic. Definitely. So it is very difficult for those who are having respiratory problems because there will be a, uh, some amount of compromise in inhaling the oxygen uh, when you are using mask very tightly. So definitely those people will have such type of problems. So in that condition, it is always better to maintain a social distance or uh, not to go to any crowded places. So where you can have a chance of getting more respiratory infections. So in the, because there is no other alternative. So if you use it with the larger respirators, the chances of entering of these viruses into your respiratory system may be more. So the chance of getting infection will be definitely more compared to uh, the, this thing. So in that condition, it is always uh, better to avoid such type of crowded places or those who are having such type of problems, better to not to meet them. Uh, so our uh, use very a short period of time whenever they are talking to them, just use it and come out of that area. So such type of practices will help you so that you won't feel more suffocated also. How is it yeah. that the doc doctors who have worked in COVID wards like you and some others, how have they escaped getting COVID because they wear masks only? No, no, even we got the infection, ma'am. Even we got the infection. We are also human beings, but uh, we have not contracted that infection from our COVID wards. But uh, definitely, I would say that uh, usually doctors uh, get such type of infections, their family and friends, when they become more liberal and they remove their mask and talk to their family and friends, that could be the, one of the uh, source of infection to develop such type of infections rather than the COVID ward or the COVID patient. Thank you very much. In fact, I have hardly gone out in the last two and a half, two years, three months. Yes, my friend. <laughs> Except to have my booster shot and, you know, I have, because of this care of getting something, I... Yeah, definitely. It is better to avoid always COVID because it is not just the COVID which is deadlier. We have so many other bacteria, viruses around us, which can sometimes cause, but definitely we have our own immune system, which can fight against such type of viruses. So, so as much as possible, it is better to take a precautions if we have a lot of such type of comorbid conditions. And uh, consulting a doctor with uh, minimal symptoms is definitely helpful so that the progression of the disease can be hindered. And also we can reduce the... Uh, complications of the diseases also. That is also very much important. So uh, as elderly people tell this, the prevention is always better than cure. So it is always prevent from getting such type of infection is the best policy. What were you saying about respirators that you people use? What are those things? Those are same as that of N95 mask only. Man. So, But when we, uh, we are using those uh, uh, N95 mask we used to get a fogging in front of the face shield. Uh -huh. So we never yeah. used to see the patient's face and we never used to uh, communicate properly. So that's why we started using respirator so that we could breathe, uh, like exhale properly. In that. What is a respirator? 
it has got a even a respiratory port also so that uh, you can properly uh, inhaling so that is not in contact with these things so that that is same as that of n95 mask but usually that helps to it has got a, a separate exhale uh, port so you can exhale through that port and inhalation through some other port so that you, you usually won't cause some fogging and all those things thank you very much Thanks. Uh, there is a question in chat box sir, by Ms. Uh, Rani. Yes. yes. Is there a cure for a COPD? Has COPD, when you, can, when you see the definition of COPD, COPD itself is a condition where it is considered as a progressive and persistent air flow limitation. So it means it is a progressive type of disease. Every year, once it sets in our body, so that is a progressive disease. So every year there will be some amount of decline in our lung functions and you will have a chance of repeated infection. That's why we have to uh, take a proper medication so that disease will be under control and you will not get an intermittent exacerbation of the lung uh, COPD. So those intermittent exacerbation means there will be increase in the symptoms compared to the normal day-to-day -day, uh, symptoms. So those symptoms are sometimes more uh, dangerous because people can go into respiratory failure. If you get such type of exacerbations uh, every monthly or three to four times in a year, that is going to uh, decline your lung functions uh, rap as rapidly as possible. So that is going to cause more uh, worsening of the disease. Otherwise, COPD is a progressive and persistent disease. Only thing you can control the symptoms. To some extent, you can increase the lung functions. And that is helpful. Otherwise, it is not completely curative disease. Sir, sir Jambunathan, sir, you can unmute and ask your question. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. For an excellent session so far. But let's see, nowadays we are thinking of going in for, I mean, this uh, annual medical checkup and this, this kind of things. That is why we try to protect ourselves through a poor warning. What exactly is the test that will determine about our level of uh, this uh, uh, nostril health and uh, our, uh, I mean, whether we are prone for these kind of diseases, etc. This, especially this, I mean, uh, uh, the, the diseases that can come to like COPD, etc. Yeah, definitely. So it is the first important thing is the doctor's experience. Once he examine you, once he start asking some leading questions to you. Definitely will come to know that there will be some predisposing factor so that you may develop that. Because there are so many other exposure histories, some of the uh, risk factors are some diseases which are related to develop such type of diseases. So accordingly, we can direct you to a particular investigation or you can monitor with that investigation so that you can see whether you are going to develop such type of disease. For example, so if you are working or you were, you were working in a long time for a, uh, some uh, factory where there will be exposure to some smoke or something. So we usually ask, uh, ask you people to go for a regular pulmonary function test so that you can see whether your lungs are going uh, uh, affected by such type of exposure to smoke or not. Because it is not necessary that all the people who are exposed to smoke usually develop the diseases. But it is extent of the exposure and the duration of the exposure, how it has affected your lung functions, that usually we will come to know in our uh, pulmonary function test. That pulmonary function test will definitely help us to see the FEV1, we call it. It is the functional, it is same as that of our BP. So we usually tell 120, 80 is the normal. Likewise, FEV1, if it is more than 70, when you calculate it to your age or your height, so if it is more than 70 of that predicted value, then we usually consider that your lungs are healthy and it is doing well. So likewise, there are different diseases, like a test for the different diseases and the different comorbid conditions which can affect that. So accordingly, if you go for that, then you can at least monitor whether you are going to get such problems over a period of time or even if you are getting such a type of problems, how early you can tackle that so that you can prevent the further progression of the disease. The, all those things usually depends upon the type of the disease and the exposure history and the risk factors, what you are having, whether your family history 
of lung cancer is there then there are so many screening tests to rule out the lung cancers so if we have smoked around 30 years for a long period of time for three, three to four cigarettes per day that is enough to develop a lung cancer so in such condition so it is always better to go for some low dose ct test we call and that is a screening tool to uh, detect uh, early lung cancer so that we can tackle it as early as possible so it is all about the the risk factor you are having and uh, that risk factor which is going to cause a particular disease so accordingly our investigation should be directed so that there won't be any unnecessary investigation and at the same time so we can target that particular disease and we can monitor it uh, um, as best as possible thank you dr sir that means there is no actually preventive check as such yes yes sir, yes, yes okay. definitely it depends upon your history and there are some simple chest x ray when you go for uh, some uh, tests so that will definitely help us to rule out so many things there are some preliminary tests so that is usually included in our routine health checkup whatever you are undergoing so those things we we find anything abnormal in that then the further investigations to rule out the uh, definitive diagnosis can be made with those type of investigation otherwise so always investigations should be directed towards a particular suspicious disease rather than as a whole okay sir thank you doctor thank you thank that you. helps because otherwise what happens you know in today's context everything is treated as a, i mean an investigation the uh, Um, yeah. that's what uh, i have mentioned sir it is always the examination of the patient and the talking to the patient will definitely help us to direct our investigation as minimal as possible so that we can detect the diseases in that way only okay doctor thank you sir so it is further investigation only it is yeah, not yeah, check up yeah. it yeah, is yeah. not forming part of health check up correct correct after <laughs> health check up it is needed there should be further then, ha, it is just to screen the things screening is totally different from the uh, confirmation of the diagnosis screening oh. will help us to go towards a particular direction whether i should go towards the heart disease or i should go towards the lung disease because both can cause sometimes breathing problems so a simple ecg will help us whether i should uh, go for the Uh, like investigation towards the heart disease or investigation towards the lung disease if ecg is normal i should not go towards the heart condition because usually invariably it comes as a normal so that time we have to find out the some problems which are associated with the lung problem so likewise the simple preliminary test will direct us to go towards a particular definitive and confirmatory uh, diagnosis thank you doctor thank, thank you. you thank you god bless you thank you Uh, so my next question is how comorbid condition affects lungs i mean uh, diabetic hypertension or kidney diseases yeah, definitely ma'am yeah. so diabetes we all know that india is considered as capital of diabetes so almost uh, uh, two third of the people as age progresses usually develop the diabetes and uh, it has become one of the important risk factor for the development of the diseases in all the systems not just the respiratory systems most important thing is the infectious diseases are very common in case of uh, diabetes because diabetes itself is one of the condition where it reduces our immunity the decreased immunity is one of the risk factor to develop many diseases and at the same time it can cause the neuropathy neuropathy means there is some problem with the nerves that is called as autonomic nervous system that autonomic nervous system is usually uh, situated in our lungs where it helps us to cough out the so many foreign bodies because cough reflex works on autonomic nervous system so whenever there is some problem with the diabetes uncontrolled diabetes it is going to cause autonomic neuropathy that autonomic autonomic neuropathy is going to weak our cough reflex that cough reflex is going to cause so many lung this uh, lung infection at the same time as i told iga antibodies which are usually secreted in our airways they are also reduced when patient is having uncontrolled diabetes and there will be decrease in the functions of the lung so like expansion ability and uh, usually that uh, expansibility of the lung or recoiling process of the lung is hindered because of this diabetes and what we have observed usually diabetes is associated with uh, morbidly obesity so like overweight 
is one of the important thing which will definitely affect our lungs because when the there is a some central obesity when the abdominal belly is very big so it is going to hinder the expansion of the lung because it usually pushes our diaphragm upwards and that reduces the expansion of the lung so when the expansion of the lung is reduced so automatically whatever breath we take inside is usually less than what usually take when the lean people are taking so around 450 to 500 ml we usually take every breath but whenever there is a big belly so that reduces the expansion of the lungs so we may usually take around only 200 to 300 ml of breath inside so patient has to take two to three breaths extra to complete one breath so because of that reason over a period of time patient may go into respiratory fatigue and he will have a respiratory failures they are called as uh, obesity hypoventilation syndromes or obstructive sleep apneas because usually whenever they are sleeping they will have a, that snoring loud snoring and that loud snoring itself is one of the risk factor because that snoring is sound which is coming out of uh, our throat where there is a narrowing of the airway when we are breathing so when it is in a open stage usually you will not get this snore so when it is narrowed usually the turbulent flow which is coming from the lungs that is going to cause a sound and that sound is called as snoring and sometimes that snoring becomes very severe and you will have a complete collapse of the airways during your sleep and that is also going to cause apneas we call it as stop in the uh, breathing for a certain seconds and that process continues over a night and usually patient feel have a disturbed sleep so all those things are going to uh, impact the normal functioning of all the system because oxygenation is very much important for all the vital organs so that's why the diabetes is directly and indirectly it is related to the lung disorders and at the same time hypertension so we have seen sometimes hypertension is secondary to this obesity because they will have such type of breathing issues and because of that breathing issues there will be increased the sympathetic activity in our body and that is going to affect the heart and that in that condition heart has to pump more to work with the low oxygen levels so in that condition also it has to it has to increase the blood pressure and at the same time blood pressure sometimes if it is for a long period of time and uncontrolled it can cause heart failure and that heart failure in turn leads to accumulation of the a fluid quantity in the uh, lungs and that is called as pulmonary edema and those people also will have a breathing issues so it is uh, like directly and indirectly these type of comorbid conditions are uh, affecting our lung functions and structures and uh, that is one of the responsibility to develop long term diseases it's not audible madam yes which are the stages for lung uh, surgery is uh, um, you know required sir lung surgeries are previously like uh, lung surgeries were recommended for tuberculosis so those who have got a tuberculosis usually used to have a part of the lung damaged uh, left behind and that used to cause lot of many problems over a period of time in such conditions some of the surgeries like lobectomy means part of the lung is usually removed in that or pneumonectomy the whole whole lung is removed which depends upon the extent of the diseases so such type of uh, surgery is very usually practiced but nowadays we have got a very good uh, anti tubercular drugs or a good antibiotic so that the extent of the damage in the lungs can be usually prevented by using early administration of such type of medications so lung surgeries have come down like anything but we have got a newer inventions in the lung surgeries like uh, in case of copd copd is a condition where these lungs are usually inflated beyond what exactly it, uh, it has to inflate so in there there are some volume is reduced means there won't be any space for the expansion of the lung when you take the breath that is a condition called as this copd so when you reduce part of the lungs volume usually will have a more space for the expansion and patient used to uh, feel uh, no breathless uh, when we go for such type of surgery and there are some other surgeries which will help us uh, during uh, such type of uh, uh, like even lung now nowadays they are doing lung transplantation that is also a surgical management of some of the chronic lung conditions like interstitial lung disease 
end stage bronchiectasis condition there are so many other conditions which are not usually uh, doesn't have any cure so such conditions if uh, there is a good match uh, lungs are available then definitely surgical management with that is helpful and we have some uh, uh, layers over our lungs they are called as pleura pleural diseases or there is accumulation of fluid or pus in the lungs so in such condition also sometimes these uh, lung surgeries they are called as uh, vats video assisted thoracic surgeries or uh, decortication to remove whatever pus is accumulated within the lungs so that can be removed with some surgical managements so but as i mentioned because of uh, the good availability of the good antibiotics and early administration of these antibiotics definitely helps us to avoid these type of major surgeries as but oh not audible ma'am oh, you are on mute yeah yeah now Uh, so one last question, sir. So after this, all these uh, surgeries or whatever infection and all, what will be the uh, changes that happens to one's body? Okay. One person. Yeah. So you are talking especially after the surgeries, or it is uh, post any diseases. Of Anything the lung. after a lung disease or after any surgery? Yeah. What will be the changes to a person? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. so though lung is a, a main important organ which has received the damage from many uh, factors but uh, over a period of time because of that compromise in the lung functions there will be a low grade hypoxia in our body that is called as so there will be decrease in the oxygen level in our body throughout the uh, day so because of that reason what happens the right sided heart has to pump more so that the whatever available oxygen is there that has to be absorbed into the blood vessels and that has to be sent to the different parts of the uh, body so that in that condition that right sided heart has to work more compared to the normal things when we have got the lung function that is called as the terminology core pulmonal so when we have got such type of lung problems usually that core pulmonary changes will occur core pulmonary means it is a right sided heart failure it works for a long period of time but at certain period of time it give away and where the pumping capacity of the heart decreases and that condition we call it as core pulmonary or right sided heart failure right sided heart failure is always consequences of the lung issues we should always rule out there is some abnormality in the oxygenation and oxygenation is always by the lung lung tissue so if something is affecting that oxygenation then there must be some compromise in the lung functions and those lung functions should be addressed as early as possible so that we can avoid the long term complications of right sided heart failure otherwise there are two types of right sided heart failure sometimes it is acute as i mentioned whenever there is a blockage of the blood vessels in the uh, lungs usually that is going to once it starts opening usually right sided heart functions properly but when this becomes chronic for a long period of time then so over a period of time it reaches an irreversible stage where it becomes more dilated and it won't contract properly and people people again will have a, some disturbances in the oxygenation of the blood so that decreased oxygenation of the blood is always will have some impact on the other systems because that is the most important uh, Uh, uh material which is required for the functioning of our whole body so in such condition patient may require long term oxygen therapy even at home that is called as long term oxygen therapy or home oxygen therapy or home ventilator therapy so those things are usually required as the disease progress because it is not a reversible thing so this is the main important complications of all the lung surgeries or the lung disorders which are like for a long period of time by uh, this uh, question we are uh, ending up this session i thank you sir for uh, giving us such a so much uh, vast information about uh, the respiratory problems and uh, i thank all the youtube and uh, zoom participants meanwhile and over to you gina ma'am i thank you also for providing such a wonderful opportunity thank you ma'am Uh, thank you once again from the Vayuman uh, team demands we would like to thank uh, dr shrikant sir for uh, accepting our invitation and having this wonderful topic on this uh, uh, 
uh, World Asthma Day uh, to spread awareness. Thank you so much sir, for having this session and also our moderator Smita uh, for moderating the session. All the Zoom and YouTube participants who have joined for the session, thank you. Once again, uh, I would like to thank our partners of uh, Vayomansas and Jivni, Government of Karnataka, Indian Psychiatric Society, Karnataka Chapter 1, Karnataka State Legal Service Authority, Bangalore Apartment Federation, Happy 60 Plus, Samadana Counseling Center, Icon Life Science, REC Foundation and NSC Foundation. With that, I would like to wish all a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.